Hello and welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corcor Foundation for Mental Health. I'm Terry, the creator and co-host of this podcast. I've lived with depression most of my life, and I know how easy it can be to feel all alone in the experience. I'm not alone, and you aren't either. And I'm Dr. Anita Sands, a licensed clinical psychologist and life coach with a number of my own diagnoses, all of which bring a certain amount of anxiety and depression along with them. There is great power in shared experiences. We share our own as we engage in intimate and candid conversations with our weekly guests, exploring different perspectives on and experiences with depression. We keep it real because depression is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. Hi, Terry. Hello, Anita. So today's episode is about meeting people where they are. It's important to not rush in with solutions and a quick fix to our problem, which implies so many insulting things, including that someone else has a deep and accurate understanding of the symptoms and experiences we're having, that there is an easy fix, and that they know it and we haven't thought of it or tried it, likely over and over and over. (laughs) Instead, ask gentle questions. Listen to the answers with an open mind and an open heart. And then ask how you can support the person versus assume that you know what they want or need. When we're deeply depressed and isolating, for example, someone on the outside might think that what we need is to socialize. But that's not helpful advice if we're in a place where we can't even muster the energy to reply to a text. We're told sometimes to head to the gym or a hot yoga class, but the physical weight of depression can literally have us pinned to our couch. So to be clear, socializing and exercising, meditating, stretching and breathing, they might well benefit us if we did them. But for a million reasons, they just might not be options. Not at the moment, not today, not on the days that our floors are covered with dirty clothes and sinks filled with unwashed dishes, and we don't even notice or care. Today, we're going to introduce you to another free online resource that was created to give you tools and resources to better function during those really dark days of depression. It's called Cereal for Dinner. Last week, we profiled its founder, Emily Director, a medical student who had to step away from her studies when her depression made them impossible. In learning how to manage her own mental health, She found many practical, evidence-based tips that she shares online and with us today. Here again is Emily giving her voice to depression. The homepage of CerealForDinner.org says, The unwashed dishes, the greasy hair, the laundry piled up high. We've been there. Isn't it interesting how comforting it can be to hear that? It's not just you or me. And those conditions don't exist because we're lazy or worthless. I mean, think about it. If we didn't bathe or do housework because we were down for the count with a disabling case of the flu or COVID, nobody would judge us. So today, Emily's going to meet us where we are or where we have been and know we could be again, and walk us through a day offering research-based tips for how to do life, even when the very basics seem impossible. So, you know, a lot of times we have, I mean, if we're lucky enough, we have our therapists, we have our, perhaps our, you know, uh, medication prescriber, um, and they can do their clinical work. But a lot of times when it comes to the actual day to day, all right, how am I supposed to like do the things in my life now? There isn't really much to go by. Like there is no playbook for depression. There is no kind of like guide. Having identified the need for some reliable guidance, Emily applied the curiosity, discipline and intellect that got her into an Ivy League med school to research ways to live with sometimes incapacitating depression. 
Let's start with waking up. For me, that was probably the worst part of my day Mm -hmm. because it was just like, oh my God, I have to do this again. Right, yes. So talk to me about what you have found can be helpful. And I will preface this by saying like, my recommendations all come from like sources that are as uh, evidence-based as possible. And I also have a team, a great board of um, clinicians who um, support me and provide advice when it comes to creation of resources as well. Fabulous. So anyway, I think when it comes to waking up, I think what I've found is that starting off by doing something like um, drinking a a glass of water has been found to um, just help wake the body up a little bit. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before. I always hear lemon water. Yeah, everyone likes the lemon water. (laughs) a water bottle by my bed um, and that I drink that first thing and it helps to just like kind of wake my body up a little bit. I think like what's difficult for folks in the morning is that there's like this kind of dreadful feeling of this, you have this whole day in front of you. Yes. Um, you know, and so what I try to do personally is I will do um, a short meditation or breath work exercise to try to kind of like breathe through those emotions and kind of like set my mind up for the day and then if I'm really like having like I need to go to work and or whatever Mm -hmm. and I'm like really struggling to get out of bed you can just literally start out just moving your legs or moving your arms in your bed like just moving them and feeling that sensation of what movement feels like and then going step by step so you know once you get your legs moving then moving one leg to the side of the bed and seeing how that feels and moving the other leg to the side of the bed and seeing how that feels and then slowly making it your goal okay let's just get to my dresser to you know get dressed for the day but it's really just taking small movements that can create more motivation to make bigger movements Someone without depression would be stunned to hear this, I think, because yeah. it's like, wait, you're, you're almost making it sound like a physical illness. Mm-hmm. And having it, I know that it is. I remember that like physical weight, right? That the, the, the vests or whatever they're called, those lead things you wear when you have a dental right. x-ray. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like that was on my whole body. Yeah. It was actually difficult, physically difficult to, to rise. Never mind the thoughts. I love that comparison of vests that they put on you at the dentist's office because that was exactly how it felt for me or feels Mm -hmm. (laughs) and felt for me too. It's like this heaviness. Um, They can call it lead and paralysis in some cases if it's really bad. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's kind of like what I would recommend for waking up. And again, I am not a clinician. (laughs) I do have my master's in medical science, but I am not a clinician. (laughs) Got it. So you said move from your bed to your dresser and I to get dressed. And I, my first thought was, oh, she's skipping the shower. So let's That's talk true. about the shower. The shower, the dreaded shower. Yeah. You know, for folks that have trouble showering, I think it makes sense. I think um, at least for me, you know, it wasn't just that I was sad and I was exhausted. It was like that I just didn't feel like I was worth caring for my caring for myself. You know, like I wasn't, I didn't have, I didn't just, I just didn't care about myself at all. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what's the point of me actually looking okay or like having not greasy hair or things like that. Um, So I think it's a matter of like also like self care that you're lacking as well. As with the slow movements to get out of bed and start the day, Emily says hygiene can also be reduced to smaller, more doable steps. Like if you are not having it, that day like use some dry shampoo like just put it on your head and get the grease out of your hair you know you can also try like using the sink and using uh, a washcloth and making it like wetting the washcloth and putting it on like the kind of dirtier smellier areas of your body Um, you could try washing your hair in your sink instead of in your shower so you don't really get all of your clothes off and all that stuff and get in the shower Also, people use baby wipes a lot, and that can be used if you're, like, really having trouble getting out of bed or something like that. Baby wipes can be a fantastic option. If it's the standing part of showering that feels just too much, Emily reminds taking a bath is an option. 
as could be one of those no-slip shower chairs. There's also like other creative things out there. Um, like there are, um, I don't know if you've heard that there's actually like shampoo caps no. that you can use. Yeah, they're rinse-free shampoo caps. You put them on your head and you scrunch your hair up and then um, you don't have to rinse your hair at all. And they also have the same with body washes as well and like sponges and things like that. That would be such a lovely care package to give to someone you know who has depression or to have as like a go bag for yourself, you know, to say like, oh, you know, sometimes we feel it come and hear it coming. I I understand that you don't have a go away a whole lot. But, you know, when I hear the Jaws music playing, it's like, oh, you know, that might be a good time for me to make sure I have all those things handy. Yeah. I like how practical this is. I appreciate this, Emily. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I actually do that for myself um, because I have a lot of trouble brushing my teeth and I have a lot of trouble washing my face. And so what I do is I actually, beside my bed, I have a basket and it's filled with um, these things called wisps, which are disposable toothbrushes that that you don't need water for. And then I also have like um, disposable face wipes that I can use to wash my face. Um, So I keep those at my bedside along with some other um, like kind of hygiene products that I might need in case like I'm having a day and like things and I just need to, you know, take care of my hygiene in a really quick and easy way. Okay. Assuming we've gotten out of bed, assuming we have in some fashion um, tended to our hygiene and washed up. Let's shift to meals and feeding ourselves, because I know that when I am not hydrated, when I am not fed, especially when I'm on meds, that can really be a problem. It's absolutely a problem. And I think it's such an uh, overlooked problem when we're feeling depressed and we're not feeling nourished. So, I mean, I think there's a number of things to do with eating. And one is looking for easy recipes that you can just throw together and making a list of those um, ahead of time. Like when you're in not an episode, when you're not in an episode Mm -hmm. so that you have those, um, you can also make food, make some meals ahead of time while you're feeling better so that when you know that you're feeling bad, you can just take it out of the freezer or something like that. Um, and then use those. Um, so like plant that pulp, like, planning ahead idea is like really helpful. Um, What I do is I can just like quickly microwave the frozen vegetables, throw in like the garlic powder and salt. Mm -hmm. I will put the microwavable rice in it and then I'll take the protein and I'll like either just take the rotisserie chicken and just take the pieces um, or I will um, cook the protein and that's what I do. And um, Then you can, like, you. what's cool about that is that you can use, like, different sauces that are really easy to make and have it be almost like a different meal every night. And the protein can be a can of beans that you open up, rinse off, and stir in. Right, exactly. I actually just did that last night. I was like, there's no way I'm making chicken right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the sauce can be salad dressing, I mean, or, you know, uh, amino acids or whatever kinds of things you right. have in your fridge. Right. It doesn't have to be some some chef thing. Oh, yeah. No way. No, we're not looking for chef status here. And it's okay to have cereal for dinner. And and cereal for dinner is a thing that is inevitable. And then the other kind of big tip that I advise people is, like, it's really hard to forget about the environment, but we're, what I say is temporarily forget about saving the environment. So making use of paper plates, plastic utensils, like disposable aluminum pans so that you don't have to do dishes because right, right. dishes just pile up and it's terrible. Right. And let's let's decrease that by, by just Absolutely. throwing stuff out. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the sink full of dishes is a common thing here. And... Uh, uh, the one problem, well, lots of problems with it. One is I hate it when my outside looks like my inside feels. And one is the, it does start to smell even after two or three oh, days. Yeah. And, you know, then you've got that. You got to smell. You got the, that. Yeah. The, the yeah. Dishes, like, yeah. It's a thing. And it really doesn't help you think I'm doing OK. No. Right. Even if you're doing OK ish, you know, when you see that, you think maybe I'm not. Yeah. You know, exactly. yeah. Yeah, that's a good barometer. 
It is. It is for me. Yeah. Um, yep. Do we talk about cleaning? The same sort of thing. We're just talking about the sink full of dishes yeah. there. But there's a lot of people who have told me that they will have a pile of clean sheets on the foot of their bed oh, for God, yeah. weeks without making the bed. I know that I am a, a, I am, make very good use of the storage on the floor in my bedroom. Yeah, I mean, so cleaning is something that I still I struggle with a ton and something... I'm still yet to find like a great resource on, but you know, I think it's really easy to just feel like so like sh- ashamed when you have a room that's just disgusting and you haven't been able to take care of it. So that gentle mentality, however you can harness it is really key in studies. They've actually found that being empathetic towards yourself is a way better motivator than being like hard on yourself. Um, so, I mean, I think for, for cleaning, it's really like taking breaks, starting off really small, like start with just like your bedside table or something, cleaning that off. Maybe that gives you the motivation to, you know, just throw your clothes in your hamper that's a huge one. Just picking up the dirty clothes and putting right. them somewhere where you're not looking at them. You got to do it anyway before you wash them. Right. <laughs> and when there's enough of them, that can make a real difference. Yeah. I mean, what you could do is just do it by type of thing. So, like, maybe it's just like, okay, I'm just going to do trash right now. And you find mm-hmm. all of your pieces of trash and you throw them out, and that's it. And then the next day you say, okay, now we're going to do clothes now. And you just find mm-hmm. all the different clothes on your floor and you put them on your hamper also there's kind of research that's shown like trying to pair a cleaning activity with something you already do is really helpful so for instance like whenever you go to the bathroom you pair that with picking up clothes off the floor or something like that Mm -hmm. um so like with something that's already kind of like habitual um or automatic you pair that with the activity that you really don't want to do And here's a reminder many of us need. It is okay to ask for help with this stuff when we need it. Even if we've asked before. Even if we're embarrassed to need help. Even if we feel burdensome or unworthy of support and kindness. I can't count the amount of times I've had to call my mom and been like, I literally have a mess right now and I don't know how to deal with it. And like, I'm fortunate to have had her like come and help me. Yes. We've done several episodes with Sam Dylan Finch, who is a really good mental health advocate and very, very, very practical like you. And Sam always says that that's something someone can help with. You know, the internal stuff, the getting out of bed, those may be more personal, the bathing. But you can say, would you do my dishes or, or, or talk to me while I do or I'll dry or whatever. And can you come over, like you just said, with your mom and help me clean up a little bit? Because mm-hmm. when we're in a really bad place, I, I like to think that someone would want to help if we asked. Yeah. Yeah. And I think cleaning and having an environment in which like you feel safe and clean and comfortable in just can help with with just like your general like mental health in so many different ways. Environment is so important. And so I think if you're really struggling and you have a house that's really, really messy, like trying to enlist someone you trust to help you or I mean, unfortunately, like I, I've had to make investments in my mental health in a lot of ways and spend money like if if there's no one else around like there have been times where I've had to like call a cleaning service and spend more money than I want to and that's like money that like could go to like my loans and stuff mm-hmm. like that but like unfortunately at that time period I need that in order to like function so unfortunately like there's times when you just have to make investments in yourself and that could be a time when when that's the case it can be really hard. And you know, we are talking to somebody who gets it when they say things like have a wipe next to your bed, as opposed to just get up and check right. all the boxes and dot all the I's and cross all the T's when sometimes right. you just can't. And and just being really gentler with ourselves and showing ourselves some grace. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Like, I think it's all what I'm trying to accomplish here 
is that feeling of being gentle with yourself, showing yourself some grace. I think a lot of times we're told or we tell ourselves to just muscle through it and you'll like get better. And I operate the whole kind of website off the idea of this idea of it's called behavioral activation where, you know, motivation may not be there, but if you're just able to like do a small behavior that can cause you to have more motivation that can give you the give you more motivation and then you can just do a le- another small behavior and that can give you more motivation and so um it's that and it's also finding hope it's finding you know there's so many times when yeah sure i could like go do things and try to like clean my room but i didn't give a shit because i just <laughs> didn't feel any hope for myself and i thought you know i was destined for not good things and you know i think um finding ways to harness hope via you know like there are weather um different apps out there there's an app called the stigma app which is fantastic we also have um the uh on our on the website we have like many videos of folks that have dealt with depression and are in the healing process just like i am and um you know, harnessing, finding those, seeking those people out, I think is really important as well. Well, Terry, there was so much really detailed, really helpful information that, that Emily has, has compiled for us. And it goes along with, um, you know, what I do when I need to do this and what I ask my clients to do, which is, Take the next possible achievable step and it doesn't matter how small that is, you know, so if it's can you move from the bed to the couch so at least you're lying in a different room, you know, can you put apples on, you know, the table that's next to you so that when you do get hungry, you can eat something that's not processed. Um, Just open the blinds. If we can't get out of nature, can we get some light in? Can we, you know, see something green? Even though those are very tiny steps, those tiny, tiny steps will give you a little bit more than not taking them so that you can take the next one and then the next one. And so many, so many of the things she recommended are doable. They are very broken down into those easy to achieve steps, you know, for hygiene, for nutrition. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I'm very impressed with all of her advice. It's so good. And the the concept of behavioral activation can be tricky for those of us who don't understand it or haven't studied it, because the thought that that thing you can't do, if you do it, might give you energy to do the next step. And intuitively, in a healthy place, I can kind of understand it. In bed, I would have a little more difficulty with it. But uh, you're the therapist. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, really, it's sort of like it goes it goes back to this notion that an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion Mm. tends to stay in motion. And it works for our brains and our bodies as well. So some days it may still be like, I don't know, I don't know if I have the energy to do that. But if you say that's all I have to do today. That's Mm -hmm. maybe more of an achievable goal than that end result where we hope that you will get you know, through kind of feeling more energy, more activation, more motivation from actually doing. Um, So we want to find the smallest step that you can actually do. It will lead to the next step and to the next step. If we don't do anything, we're likely to do more of nothing. Mm -hmm. And and that deepens depression. It it deepens that sense of hopelessness that things are ever going to change. It does. Okay, thank you so much, Emily, for sharing. Again, the website is cerealfordinner.org. We will link to it, but that's you can look it up yourself with that. And we invite you to come to givingvoicetodepression.com and looking for the red record widget and leave a comment about this episode. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you do. Tell us what you found helpful uh, or give us any feedback in general because it's just really nice uh, when that tree falls in the forest to know that somebody heard it. (laughs) Yes, and please join uh, the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook community. We would love to have you there for support for just the messages that come out every single day that remind you that you're not alone and you can beat this. Thank you, Anita, and thank you, Emily. 
and we'll be back next week with another episode. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate and reflect on your own experience with depression, or better understand how to support someone else who is struggling. If this episode has been of comfort or value to you, know that there are hundreds of others like it in our archive, which you can easily find at our website, givingvoicetodepression.com. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up, even if it's hard. If someone else is struggling, take the time to listen 